Hello and welcome to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. I'm James Preston and in this episode we're shining the spotlight on Blue Bricks, who have been at the forefront of identity-based digital security for close to a decade. Vikram Sareen is the founder and CEO of Blue Bricks and he joins me live now on Kalkine TV. Vikram, a very good afternoon to you. Very good afternoon. Uh, it's quite a rainy day today in Perth. Uh, how are you doing? Mate, it's nice and sunny here. Not that we can actually enjoy it at the moment, unfortunately, but fantastic to have your yeah. company on the show. Uh, Vikram, let's start off with a pretty simple one. Tell us exactly what it is that Blue Bricks does. Uh, Blue Bricks uh, is a niche uh, cybersecurity product company. Uh, we work with mostly banking and financial institutes as well as uh, large and medium enterprises. Uh, to protect uh, their applications, their data, as well as their user identity, uh, which is one of the biggest concerns right now. And as we keep on hearing every day that uh, some of the other uh, enterprise has been breached, ransomware is uh, you know at its peak right now. Uh, so we are the guys who actually help you fix those problems uh, before they happen. <laughs> well, look, as I always say, prevention is much better than any cure that we could possibly look for. So in the introduction as well, I made mention of identity-based digital security. Can you break down exactly what that term is for people who might not be aware? Sure. I, so in real world, you and me are together. We can see each other. But as soon as we get into the digital world, uh, that's where uh, the digital identity becomes very relevant. Uh, so essentially, there are two steps for establishing digital identity. Uh, one is how you're onboarding your particular customer or your employee uh, or the real person into the digital persona. Uh, and the second is that how do you uh, authenticate and authorize that uh, digital identity or the persona that you have created. Uh, so when I talk about uh, the first part, which is the onboarding, uh, that is where from your facial recognition to your uh, identity card, which could be a passport or your driving license, uh, liveliness test, all these kind of things uh, become very relevant as a technology uh, to ensure that a real person is being onboarded as a digital persona or identity. And then after that, you start the journey of uh, how you give the security to them. So it could be your facial, it could be your uh, push notification on your phone, uh, it could be a specific one-time password that gets generated on your you know, soft token or a hard token and things like that. Uh, so, set of applications which you want to protect uh, need to ensure that you have a proper onboarding and also proper uh, identity management which kicks mm. in later. So, uh, that's how I would put it uh, quite simply. No, well said. I mean, it's, it's bad enough if you're potentially being catfished, for example. The last thing you want is to be catfished by someone who can potentially take money from you. So, very important to make sure that our digital yeah. identities are secure. Now, Vikram, according to some AAA uh, ACCC statistics from last year, I should say, Aussies lost yep. a staggering $851 million to scams in 2020. How does Blue Bricks help prevent yep. against the likes of scams and online fraud? Okay, uh, that's, a, that's a very question that, uh, you know, I love to answer. I, uh, it starts with uh, how uh, you are enabling or facilitating your users. So there are two simple engines that work uh, in any enterprise. So let's, say, let's take an example of a bank. Uh, now, bank uh, needs to have uh, what we call it as a transaction monitoring system uh, where you are looking at every transaction that is being taken place either through your card or over an ATM or through internet banking, mobile banking, any, any, any form of transaction that takes place. Uh, and then you need to look at what are the accounts that are being uh, used uh, for making those money move. So that, that is where a beautiful AI engine can help out in tracking what exactly is happening. Uh, and this is sometimes also called a fraud detection engine. And then on the front end, you need to make sure, like similar to you know what you and me do at our homes, we lock the door, we have a CCTV. So you need to have enough uh, preventive securities in place so that if there is a hacker who's trying to come in, you are able to create so many barriers that you can stop them. Now, mm -hmm. what happens today is that, that most of the users, uh, they are uh, not very well aware uh, of what they should give and what they should not give over a phone or over an email. Uh, so people still go ahead and click on emails. People still go ahead and answer you know, phone calls, which is where you know, uh, hackers are able to get their uh, you know, security breached. So user awareness, uh, is very important aspect. Uh, second is putting both the engines, which is 
transaction monitoring engine as well as a strong authentication in the front when they are accessing you know the different applications that is what needs to happen and that is what bluebricks does so when we go in we not only just help the customers with putting those technology products but we also help them with building a use case of how to educate their customers and how to educate their employees uh, you know in case something goes bad or how to handle those uh, you know uh, do's and don'ts uh, you know when it comes to uh, you know identity or uh, cyber crime so that's what a digital uh, uh, sorry bluebricks does well, I'll get your take on general strategies that we can implement to try and prevent cybersecurity hacks a little later in the interview itself. But yeah. you're 100 percent right. I mean, we, we have an ever evolving situation, I guess, of scams becoming more and more elaborate. Back in the old days, it used to be, you know, the email one for the Prince of Nigeria. Oh, I've got all this money that I've left in an account. Someone please take it from me. I can't possibly have it all myself. But, you know, now they're quite elaborate. Our producer, George, about 30 minutes ago, actually had someone call him up trying to get yeah. Uh, around about twenty thousand dollars off him, saying that your facial features have been identified in a crime. We need you to confirm with your bank account, with your license information, that you are in fact misrepresented here, and that yeah. this should be cleared from your name. I mean, they're getting quite sophisticated, whether it's through text or whether it's an actual call center now being set up. So there's so many different yeah. elements at play here. One of the other things I wanted to ask you about is because you've got quite a few different products that you offer as well with Blue Bricks. Talk to me about the Axiom Protect. Now, I know this one is one that you're quite proud of. Exactly how does it work? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, as I rightly mentioned, that, um, uh, you know, when it uh, comes to protection, there is an internal uh, engine uh, which manages the transactions and looks at those transactions, you know, as a whole. Uh, from multiple applications and then you know it tells you if there is a you know certain fraud or red alert that has been raised uh, the other side is that it also helps in building uh, multi-factor authentication uh, from onboarding as well as uh, you know uh, authentication and authorization that needs to be done uh, so Exium protect actually handles for multiple applications being used within the enterprise and it looks at whatever happening outside with the customers and also what's happening internally in terms of transaction and mm -hmm. then builds the whole story together. Now, what you have highlighted as an example was is very interesting. Uh, I think hackers, uh, you know, as such, they are uh, getting very innovative and using the technology against, uh, you know, uh, us. So that means that they are abusing the technology and we are trying to use the technology to defend ourselves. And it's always a uh, you know, red and a blue, uh, you know, uh, I would say tug of war that keeps on happening. Uh, the only thing which I would, uh, you know, uh, say in one simple line is that, that as an enterprise, we need to protect our customers and our data. And as a user, uh, let's say if you have a bank account as a bank user, uh, you need to make sure that uh, do not react immediately. We know that emotions <laughs> take over uh, because if somebody says this to you, you suddenly start panicking and you give away whatever they're asking for. Uh, but it's always good to just stop and ask them certain questions like what is your batch id give me your employee number can you tell me which branch you're working for which office you're calling from can you make me talk to the superior can you send me something over an email you know to prove that this is what has happened so instead of we asking them uh, we give away all the information so i think that little bit of awareness is what you know is needed from the customer side and if they start asking back questions to this you know to these fraudsters uh, suddenly they don't want you because you are you're smart you're intelligent um, than them uh, so they shy away. Uh, so that's the way uh, I, you know, I preach to everybody. Uh, my father is uh, 75 year old and uh, he still gives away and writes <laughs> everything on a piece of paper. Uh, so I keep on making more people aware that don't do that. Ask questions if you have a question or a call that comes to you. Yeah. I think you're 100% right, mate, especially when you consider that older generation. I mean, my grandmother, for example, has never even known a microwave, so I can't even imagine how she would go with the internet or with the smartphone. So it can be a bit of a scary yeah. thing to navigate for a lot of people. Now, one of the things as well that we've seen, Vikram, in the last few years is that the fintech sector itself is just evolving and expanding at a rapid rate. So what do you see yeah. for the future of the sector and what are some of the developing fintech cybersecurity trends of 2021 that have caught your eye? Yeah. Oh, uh, if you look at global statistics, I think, uh, firstly, not everybody in the world is bankable. Uh, and uh, the banking itself is changing quite a bit. And I think uh, fintechs have, uh, or the neo banks, the new generation banks have challenged the uh, old traditional banks. Uh, so it's put a lot of pressure on both the sides that who's actually going to do a better job. Now, this is very healthy from, you know, from a, from a uh, I would say, competitive point of view, because now technology 
going to help neo banks as well as traditional banks to come out. Uh, and over there, if you see, uh, especially in BFSI banking and financial, uh, there are a lot of service providers that uh, banking software as a service who have come out, marketplaces have come out where uh, it's becoming a little bit playing field. So uh, now fintechs uh, fundamentally look at features. Uh, so cyber security in fintech because you're exchanging, you know, as per our law, Privacy Act and all these kick in. So you need to make sure that the user data is uh, very well protected, the privacy is very well respected. And that is where fintech needs to have that component of cyber security in place when they are onboarding customers, when they are storing the data, how they're building those applications and then rolling it out. So uh, that is where I think there's a huge opportunity of growth. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, when we talk about what are the trends that are happening right now, mm. uh, I think, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, uh, cyber security as a whole, uh, there's a huge innovation that is happening in uh, how we look at uh, segmenting customers, uh, looking at the user behavior. Uh, so in cybersecurity, there's a concept called zero trust. Uh, that means don't trust anyone and then still build it ahead. Uh, so that is being kicked off. Uh, fintechs are leveraging on um, uh, cybersecurity to give uh, better loans or micro loans. Uh, like if you look at uh, what happened with Afterpay, you know, big acquisition uh, from Square, uh, you know, that was amazing. Uh, and again, it, it reflects that in Australia, the fintechs uh, and cybersecurity is again going to have a huge boom. Uh, and cybersecurity is going to play a very good role over there. Uh, the sandbox, uh, which uh, you know RBA has uh, you know kind of rolled out with a couple of you know banks, that's also an amazing uh, you know step ahead. Uh, so it's bringing the whole ecosystem of finance is in, into into a level playing field, and everything is getting more connected. Uh, so personally, I'm very excited. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity to be an entrepreneur. It's a great opportunity to be in Australia and build amazing, awesome stuff, uh, you know, and uh, I, I love it. Uh, so there's so much happening. Uh, and I think all the like-minded people, uh, you know, whom I interact with, they are super excited looking, you know, next three to five years. Yeah, amazing stuff will come out. <laughs> well, Vikram, I'm loving the passion that you're exuding. And I, I also love that you mentioned there the idea of an ecosystem because you're right, it is just expanding and growing. It's not just banks now, it's, it's things like the FinTech sector. It might even be a brand new startup uh, two months from now, who is yep. offering something like Afterpay has been for the last few years. Now, just before I let you go, I know you've given a few pieces of advice through this interview, but is there any sort of general advice that you could give individuals and businesses and all sorts of places? How can they make sure to protect themselves against fraud and to be as cyberly secure as they possibly can? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a tough one. Uh, I wish you know everybody was aware, but. <laughs> I think if you look at an enterprise, uh, what I feel is that uh, it's not that difficult. So I have a philosophy called FOMO and JOMO, uh, fear of missing out and joy of missing out. Uh, so cybersecurity, because it's being very complex and complicated, uh, you know, you tend to uh, be into the JOMO world. Uh, so if you really break it down for an enterprise, uh, don't hire, uh, you know, cybersecurity experts because you don't need them all the time. Uh, get an independent business advisor who can help you out with structuring that, with architecting that and look at your data, uh, because that is what the hackers are trying to steal. Uh, if they are getting access to your data, that means you're going to get attacked. So try to protect your data from its core. And as an individual, or either an employee or a customer, uh, you know, whichever way, uh, I think we need to be just a little bit aware that the phone call or the email that I'm clicking or receiving, who is this person? So instead of just answering, you know, into in panic, just ask them, can you justify yourself? Can you tell me who you are? You know, ask those questions. And I can assure you 90 to 95% hackers will just go away. Uh, and one simple rule, don't click. Don't click any email that you don't trust that you're not sure of. So that's as simple as that. Uh, you know, if these two things are done by businesses and by uh, you know, customers and users like you and me, I think we'll be in a much better place to be. Uh, I'll have less business then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, I might have to revoke the frame request just to make sure that you feel a bit more safe as well. Don't go clicking on anything, mate. But uh, look, so great to have your time today, Vikram. Really interesting insights. And I think we'll have to get you on the tech show too because that would be a perfect place to espouse a bit more about exactly what Blue Bricks does. But once again, thank you so much for joining us on Couchline TV. Yeah, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's Vikram Serene, the founder and CEO of Blue Bricks. And of course, if you missed any part of that interview, all you have to do is head across to the YouTube channel, Kalkine Media, where you can also check out our extensive catalogue of expert interviews. That's all for now. I'm James Preston, signing off for Kalkine TV.